Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is my 2016 Honda CBR500R, and today I'll show you how to flush the coolant and inspect the cooling system. The flushing procedure is the same for all 500R, 500X, and 500F models made from 2013 to 2018, but I don't have a way to show you how to remove the fairings on anything but the 500R. Honda recommends doing this every 3 years or 8,000 miles, whichever comes first. Going too long without changing the coolant can lead to corrosion and pitting inside of the engine block, so it's important to stick to the schedule. The least fun part of this job is removing and reinstalling the fairings, but I'll show you what worked for me. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Electric screwdriver, 5mm hex bit, bent nose pliers, tiny flathead screwdriver, torque wrench, socket wrench, 10 mm socket, 5 mm hex socket, 10 mm wrench, 5 mm hex wrench, and a paint marker. For this job I also needed running water, funnel, two copper washers, and two quarts of Pro Honda HP coolant. I put the bike on stands to make it easier to work on. Before I get to the fairings, I'll remove the front sprocket cover to get a better look at the water pump and hoses connected to it. For this, the shifter linkage will have to be disconnected and moved out of the way. Use a paint marker to mark the orientation of the linkage before disconnecting it with a 10mm wrench. The bolt has to be removed completely. Move it out of the way and use a set of bent nose pliers to squeeze and push the plastic band clip through from behind. A 5mm hex wrench will remove the two screws. One more band clip to remove and it's free. Don't forget to clean the inside of the cover before you put it back on. Pull this off and clean it too. Now that we can see things better, take a minute to check for coolant leaking from these hoses, their connections, and the water pump. Replace any hoses that are deteriorating. If the water pump is leaking, it may need a new gasket. This is a good time to clean your chain too. I just uploaded a video on that, so feel free to check it out. Both of the fairings are fastened with four screws and one plastic pin. On 2013 through 2015 models, the fairings are removed essentially the same way, but with three screws and two pins, and you'll need to remove the seat and the side covers first. Here's another angle for the ones that are hard to see. To remove the plastic pin, press in the center, then pry it out or push it out from the back. All these screws can be removed with a 5mm hex. The screws aren't all the same size or shape, so keep track of which hole each one came from. Pull the fairing outward, starting at the rear. Be very careful pulling the fairing from around the front cowl. The clips here are very easy to break. The part of the fairing that wraps around the front underneath the headlight needs to be pulled in the forward direction. Push back the rubber sleeve to reveal a single electrical connection, which can be disconnected by lifting up on the tab with a tiny flathead screwdriver. Careful not to bump your tripod. Once you have both fairings off, take another moment to inspect the rest of the cooling system connections for leaks and deteriorating hoses. If everything looks good, we can start draining the coolant. 
put your fluid catch pan in front of the water pump and remove this drain bolt with a 5mm hex wrench. Then remove the radiator cap to get the coolant flowing. It sprayed out a little further than I thought it would. Make sure to remove the copper washer if it stayed behind like mine did. There's also a 10mm drain bolt above the oil filter. I'll move the bike outside to flush the system with water from the garden hose, but the service manual doesn't require that you do this. More coolant came out when I put the bike on its side stand, so I'll leave it on the side stand while I flush it with water. Run fresh water through the system until it comes out completely clear. This is a good time to rinse off any coolant we spilled on the bike and hose down the radiator too because we'll be cleaning it. Reinstall the drain bolts with new copper washers. The cylinder head bolt should be torqued to 9 foot-pounds. The mating surface for the water pump drain bolt had some dried coolant stuck to it, so I used a piece of Scotch-Brite to scrub it off. This bolt should be torqued to 10 foot-pounds. The bike should be level again while we add coolant. First, check the coolant level at the reservoir. It should be somewhere between the upper and lower lines marked on the outside. Mine is way too low. There are just a few drops left. I used a funnel to add more coolant, but it's pretty difficult to see the reservoir at the same time, let alone the marks on it. I ended up just filling it until coolant started coming out from the overflow drain. This won't hurt the bike, but coolant is toxic stuff, so try not to pour a lot of it on the ground and spray it down with a hose when you're done so animals won't ingest it. Go to the radiator and slowly fill the system with coolant. It should hold about 1.5 quarts. Leave the cap off, start the engine, and let it idle for a few minutes. Give the throttle a few good twists to purge any air from the system. If coolant starts to overflow, reinstall the cap and shut off the engine. If the coolant level is low, shut off the engine, top off the coolant, and reinstall the cap. When the engine has completely cooled down, remove the radiator cap, check the level one more time, and top it off if needed. Now is a good time to give the radiator a little love. I hosed it down while I was rinsing coolant off the bike, which makes it a lot easier to scrape off all the bugs. Low water pressure is fine, but don't use high pressure. You can also use compressed air to blast out debris stuck between the fins. Use a tiny flathead screwdriver to straighten any bent fins. The service manual says to replace the radiator if airflow is restricted over more than 20% of the radiating surface. Reinstalling the fairings takes a little patience. First, plug in the electrical connection. Reattach the fairing starting with the frontmost part that fits underneath the headlight. You have to line up this tab while making sure the fairing fits onto the edge of the headlight and clips into the front cowl. You'll see gaps if anything is misaligned or not clipped in all the way. The rest of the fairing pops into place easily.
So you have to like clip in this part and then kind of pull the rest of it backwards and like bend this out like that and then push it on. Now just install the four screws and plastic pins. Moving on to the sprocket cover, position the metal chain guide with this point on the bottom. Reconnect the upper band clip and hold the sprocket cover in position while you install the two 5mm screws. Don't forget the lower band clip. Reattach the shifter linkage, lining it up with the mark you made earlier. Install the 10 millimeter bolt, and we're done. That concludes this week's video. If you like my videos, consider becoming a patron or donating on PayPal. I quit my job and I'm not going back. As always, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like to see next. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it.